All right, everybody. Uh, good morning. Good that you're all here uh, so, so early. Let's see if we can get a, a few more people moving in once we start. Um, my name is Robbie. I'm a pirate, uh, as, as you can see basically there on my shirt. Um, I also run uh, all sorts of unconventional tech conferences where we're friends with the people doing InfoShare. Uh, great events, great to be here. Uh, I'm based in, in Germany. Maybe some of you know uh, our, our one event, uh, Pirate Summit, but we also do some exciting stuff in the IoT space, and that's why I'm very excited to, to start this panel now, uh, which is called Connected Everything, Why IoT is Really Just Getting Started. So um, we have a, a cool lineup of, of speakers here, uh, international. I think the US, France, and Germany, uh, and Poland are represented. So. Um, that is great. Let's start by uh, having you guys uh, introduce yourselves quickly and, and what you do. Let's start with you, Karen, who is part of uh, Genie. Grab a microphone over there. Hi. Um, is this on? Yep. <laughs> uh, my name is Karen Nemeth. I am a product owner at Genie. We are a startup within Telefonica, and we're aiming to make the IoT consumer friendly so that you have a singular point of access to control all of your devices and then control the data and where that data goes. And in order to do this, we're helping businesses split up their development so that they can either focus just on the devices or focus just on the applications um, and really control how that data adds the value to the consumer most. Nice, thanks. Jakob. <laughs> Super, but can I start with some suggestion? Yes. Guys, because there are not too many of us, uh, why don't we get closer? That's a good idea. <laughs> what about Let's it? Get everybody you know, moved to the front, front seats. It, yeah, exactly. I know. I, you know, I'm, I'm you Polish, go. so I, I really like and I prefer sitting in the last rows. Uh, but come on, be nice. closer. <laughs> Let's get closer, guys. It will be uh, more condensed and then hopefully uh, better in acoustic way. Thank very you very good. much. Good, guys. Okay. Uh, so pleasure to be here. I'm Jakub Probala, and I do have real pleasure to be uh, uh, head of Hubron, uh, which is uh, T-Mobile's so or Deutsche Telekom's uh, initiatives initiative aimed to scout and develop innovation that is done outside and we are talking here mainly about the startups and IoT is one of our uh, key priorities for this year and next year and what is very important is that it's always linked with this what uh, our bigger brother is doing which means Deutsche Telekom or T-Mobile so everything what we do is related to this what is actually needed by uh, by market and by uh, our bigger ship yeah, thank you okay nice Felix Hi there, um, I'm Felix, co-founder and CEO of Eisner. Um, we support creative geniuses worldwide um, by creating their electronics uh, and giving them access to affordable manufacturing in Europe. So hi everybody, I'm Anthony. I work at Sigfox. Uh, so if you don't know us, we actually do IoT networks and we deploy it in countries. Um, and there I'm actually head of the startup relations. So my goal is to take entrepreneurs and they come with an idea, a prototype, and then we actually help them to go to a real product and to help them distribute it. So that's what I do there. Okay, very good. So just to get a quick feel of uh, the audience, who here has something to do with IoT already? Quick show of hands. Okay, a few. So um, not too many experts, so we'll try not to get uh, too technical with, with our terms. Um, let's, then if, if, if we can start like that, because I think the idea behind the panel was also um, why it's just getting started. I mean, there's uh, been talk about, and the word IoT has been floating around now for, for a couple of years. Um, but I think uh, a lot of people say that we're at the edge of where a lot of things will start, and we, will, we haven't seen... At the, just the tip of it. So maybe one of you wants to start by providing a quick um, definition of what, you, what IoT means for you. Uh, anybody have something at hand? I know, Felix, you said something last night. Maybe you have, <laughs> have, an, have an idea. Yeah, so um, in my opinion, um, IoT is actually one thing on the consumer side. It makes electronics more accessible and makes basically devices and sensors more accessible to humans because actually everyone can, can use it. Um, on the manufacturing side, it's actually also very interesting because if you're in an industry, usually um, you have a lot of machines, um, highly professional, but they're not connected at all. Um, and there, actually, IoT can play a role to, to, to connect the dots, to make processes more efficient, and to actually um, automate a lot of things. Um, and I think that's, that's what I like about uh, the term. For me, it's a, a, a term that actually um, packs a lot of things together. 
Anyway, what, add to the definition? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I want to be challenging. So one thing about, you know, when we say IoT is just talking, it's actually not exactly true. Uh, machines have been talking since thousands of years. I mean, I was working at Intel before, and M the M2M market was existing since, you know, a couple of years, and we know it. The IoT term came in because I think it's just starting to be democratic. You know, it's, a lot of people can access it now. And it's very, very different from the price of everything, you know, getting really, really lower um, to the, you know, accessibility of platform. Let's say I was just discussing before, like, I have one of my startup. You basically go on the platform. You click on, okay, I want a Sigfox sensor. I want a, you know, a temperature sensor. You click it, and it will provide you the whole PCB 3D model, and it will ship it to you. So with two clicks, and you don't know it, and you're already building a device you know, in a couple of hours. So you know, it's making more and more accessible to everybody. And I think that's why it is IoT has just begun starting, because it's an exponential wave. And we are really, really starting to see more and more connected stuff. But it's not really starting today. I mean, it has been starting since a couple of years, and we've been learning from this. Yeah, so my opinion on why it's only getting started, well, it's in its infancy, is really, I think, more the appropriate terminology and why it's just starting to kind of grow up is twofold. And one of it is because we have so many new, on the technical side, we have so many new um, data sharing protocols that are coming out that make it more accessible in previously hard to reach ranges. So previously, if you would have had to have a cell network in order to have this device connected, um, new protocols are coming out that have a much larger range so that we can connect devices anywhere with less transmission power. Um, and the other thing is that we are starting to see more platforms emerge out there, such as IBM Bluemix, I mean, AWS IoT, which are allowing the greater incorporation of the Internet of Things in a standardized manner. And so there's less complication when getting started into the IoT, uh, which, of course, is always beneficial for people getting started in it. So. Good. So I would just add that uh, actually IoT, is, I would say right now, is becoming everything, right? Uh, because this would, what the guy said, this is, this is very much true. But the case is that, you know, it, IoT is becoming something what actually we do not see, but we are interacting and, give a con and gives a context uh, and better understanding of this, what we are doing. I don't know if you realize, but on the way here from the hotel, from the airport, for sure uh, you were scanned, touched, uh, counted, uh, analyzed by so many things that you are not even realizing that it has been done, actually. And it was all done to make our lives much better. And I really believe it's going to uh, be more transparent. It's going to be much more cognitive or much more uh, smart. And, you know, and I really believe that we are, this what we are having here is a tip of the tip of the iceberg, right? Because IoT is about actually getting the information, getting data, is about creating a context. But uh, then what we do with the data? We are just starting to know actually what we, actually we are starting to have the idea that we can do something good with the data. So okay. this is how we see this actually, right? Okay. IoT is something that will be transparent to us, but will have huge impact on our security, quality of life, wellness, all those things. Right. This is how we see this. All right. So it's just summing up some of the factors that we just heard that are driving this trend. So it's it's uh, on the one side there's new platforms, new protocols basically coming. Um, the it's more accessible, especially in terms of price, uh, and especially in terms of also size. So sensors are getting smaller uh, can be integrated, and also are getting less dependent on, for example, stuff like a power source. Um, so those are some of the some of the drivers I think. Um, so. So what is this? Uh, what is it creating? What is it changing uh, when all of a sudden things are are connected? Um, let's look at maybe you guys because you're you're in the field and you see uh, companies doing exciting stuff with it. You see products uh, that are connected. Um, where do you think does it have the the biggest impact, or could you even say, is it more on the consumer side, or will we see that the the, the big changes that IoT or the, the connection of everything will bring are more on the industrial side? Um, you know, I always used to say, when I, to my friends, when I say I work in IoT, they all think that I'm doing connected watches and scales. And actually, the truth is, you know, the consumer IoT is the tip of the iceberg. The more value you have to do is in B2B, for sure. I mean, and that's what we have seen in all the, you know, connectivity we get at Sigfox is mainly B2B. And the, the IoT, what kind of value you can actually see is that it will transform, I think, every kind of business. For, exam for example, we're working with... Um, you know, a company doing landing gear for planes. You know, 
when you're a plane company, you buy landing gears and you attach them to your plane. Right now, they're changing this business model where you actually rent your landing gear onto your plane. And you're going to pay by how many times you actually use it. And so with putting a Sigfox device on the landing gear, you can know how many times you used it, how many hours it, it flew, and you know, how hard you actually land. So we are going to charge you just how you use it. This is just an example, but actually IoT will actually allow us to transform a business where you sell hardware to actually you rent a service. And even more than that, you know, how, how can you add some value with the data you just collected? Mm -hmm. So it will transform the business as we know it today for a lot of different you know, parts. And I think that's what you said, that IoT will become everything. It won't actually, but it will change a lot of business as we know it today. You yeah, I totally agree. Um, so we see a lot of uh, projects that come, become products. Um, so we're uh, in the prototyping business so that um, we see a lot of these things. And the thing is, it, it's very important to focus um, on the service design. So basically, it allows you uh, connecting data points um, and combining them. It actually allows you to become very creative with what you can do. So, um, and I think that, that's actually the, 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 the power is um, by, by providing a lot of, um, it, it's a buzzword in a sense. So, and, and, and since it's a buzzword, a lot of people are interested in it. And a lot of people get started with it. And um, it has become more accessible. And that allows us to, um, like everyone, to be creative with, um, you can put any type of sensor and sort of see, okay, what happens if I'm adding another sensor and let's see what I, what, 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 what I can make up with it. And that, that, that's what I like about it. It's basically giving us a, a, a completely new way to, to become creative uh, in service design. Because that's actually the most important part. It's less the hardware. That's, it needs to be produced somewhere. It needs to be shipped. But it's the, the online service that counts. Okay. Um, I don't think it's entirely fair to break up the distinction and say that it's consumer or business providing more value because they're right. In the end, the businesses will get probably the most uh, quantitative value out of the Internet of Things coming about, but that transfers up to the consumers in the end. Every dollar that DHL saves goes back to the consumer in saved costs and an added value to them as well. Um, so it's always a conjoined experience, but it also opens up new avenues for businesses. So for instance, one of the things that Genie is doing is breaking it up so developers and data scientists can sell their algorithms based on how to interpret the data from the devices. So right now, you will need to hire a large team of machine learning experts in order to actually get the raw data off the devices and interpret it to create that value. Um, and there is very few spaces in the old traditional non-IoT ecosystem where this data can be interpreted. But by opening up this up to individual developers, we have a new revenue model for people that previously would have had to have regular jobs or now they can create those companies. So. All right. So, yeah. I, I agree with Karen, right? That <laughs> yes. it's not, uh, actually, it will be much more change on the back end, actually. Right? Uh, and it's going to be for both B2B and B2C, actually, because it's very hard to differentiate it. For example, e-health, for example, right? If it's B2B or B2C, actually, and customer of the e-health, actually, is, um, is the person, right, in the, in the middle that, okay, there is some company. Uh, but I agree that, that much more to be done is on the back end. So artificial intelligence, this is something that needs to be applied here. And then I believe we will have huge, uh, I would say, boost in terms of IoT. Actually, right now, IT, those are just the uh, devices. Connectivity is imp imp very important, but this, what we will do with the data and how we steer all those things, this is going to change. This is going to be, you know, like a zero from one uh, or two one, sorry, it's, it's, it's a big change. This is good, what was going to happen. All right, so, so summing up again a bit of, of what was said, so we, we say the one thing is a lot of people think about when they hear IoT, they think about the devices, the things they see, the things they can touch. Uh, but it's really, as you're saying, the magic is more in the, the data that's being collected with those devices and what services you basically then build on top of that. So um, since we're on the startup stage, and startups usually use opportunities to do something with that, how, how much are companies or, in, in general, people that are connecting things already using that data? Where are we in terms of that? Is it, uh, is it already being used, or is there a lot of open opportunity to, to actually do something with it now? I mean, uh, <clears throat> so... Uh, I see a lot of startups actually enjoying this thing because, you know, and I, I, I call this like the Trojan horse market today because there is a huge opportunity to transform, you know, selling hardware 
to selling something very different like a service. And for example, I love to take this example. I have a company, they sell swimming pool monitoring system. You know, you put it on your swimming pool, it's, you know, you have two years of battery life monitoring your pH, you know, the temperature, the level of salt, etc. So they know how, many, how much salt you consume, etc. So they move, actually, and they know, they have to move from hardware business to sell you the device, to actually sell you a service every month to provide you salt and all the consume, that you stuff that you consume for your swimming pool. Because if you do a one shot, you sell hardware, it's good. But you have to do a V2, etc., to gain money. If you sell them something you know they consume, it's way better. And for your you know, valuation of your startup, etc., one dollar you sell is one dollar. One, you know, one dollar that you sell every month is worth way more. And so that's why I see a lot of startup, you know, they transform for just selling the hardware, a swimming pool monitoring system, to a service when they can fulfill you with consume st the stuff that you consume. And we have uh, a lot of startup going in this field, you know, just selling you hardware to actually sell you stuff after that. And we've seen that in gas, gas bottles, for example, as well. They provide you a scale, you put it under your big, big gas bottle, and every time you don't have gas anymore, they're going to come to your house, change it, and you have a brand new gas bottle. And they don't, you don't even know it. It's just a service to get new gas every time you need it. So it's completely shifting you know, opportunities from just doing hardware to the value and service you sell to them. It's very, and it's very interesting for startups today, I think. Nice. Maybe directing the question to you, because you invest in startups. Uh, what, are, what are some of the best examples you see, um, like, the, like the example we just heard of? It, I, I would Put it in more general. Uh, you know, we uh, together with Cisco and Intel, we, we had been doing Challenge Up, and uh, it was a competition or it was an acceleration incubation program for IoT. And when we did this for the first time, we saw IoT coming from the core of IoT. So it was connectivity, collecting data, actualizers, and uh, extractors. Right. When we did second edition, we saw more so-called agencies. Right. It was security. It was analytics. It was a dashboards. Right now, we see that it's more about actually people stopped doing IoT for the sake of doing IoT. Actually, they're putting on top a lot of things. Right now, they are really doing a business on top of it. They are not coming to us and saying, OK, this is the, the IoT chips. Let's do something with it. It's more coming, uh, we are coming uh, as a predictive maintenance for buses, for example, or for the, uh, for the engines. Or what was, for, for me, very surprising, uh, recently we talked with a company that they would like to do predictive maintenance for doors, right? What you can do with for the doors? Dogs. No, doors. Doors, doors. okay. You know, that, that, and, and actually, we were surprised. But when we sh shown the proof of concept, we're, wow, right? Amazing that they can do this. So actually, this is this transformation from the core getting to, to the service. And by this, we can judge the, that the um, uh, maturity, right? And uh, maturity of the business of the technology is getting more and more on the higher level, which is good, actually, right? Yeah. Because technology, for the sake of being technology, is not bringing any value, right? It needs to serve the purpose okay. and solve the problems. Yeah. Maybe directing the same question, sort of, what is the exciting stuff uh, you see to, to Karen and to Felix? Uh, because you're both, with what you do, basically enablers, uh, I, I would say, Genie, with a platform, you with a platform for um, demo basically democratizing uh, production of electronics. Um, so what's some of the stuff that, that you've seen that, that's uh, really been the most interesting? Story I think it's anything in IFTTT, but that's mostly because I'm a little bit more consumer facing as Genie. Um, so it's how you can get rid of all the tedious and menial tasks in your life and combine them so that they're all automated. Um, so one of my favorite examples is an app where your mattress tells your coffee machine how you slept the night before so it can determine the strength of the coffee that it should make you. And then when you go out for a run after the coffee is made, um, your Garmin knows when you're coming home so it can turn on your shower and your shower will be at the right temperature immediately as you enter. So you don't need to wait or press any buttons, it just automatically does all of these. And I realize that this is um, a very laughable situation but it's something that might save you a few decisions and might save you 30 seconds in your day. And in the end, that adds up to more productivity later on, depending on what you're doing. Um, so it's just a personal favorite of mine. Nice. But. Yeah, I think um, uh, we had a nice project uh, just like a few few months ago, actually. Um, that was it's quite fun. There is, it, it, it's actually sending a rocket into space, uh, but into like microspace, which is uh, not regulated. Um, and the production costs are about 50 euros, so everyone can do Ow. it. Um, and so basically, you can send your rocket to space, 
um, with a few parts of electronics and get almost anything out of there. So instead of you, you can add another sensor to sort of have a look at the UV rays or whatever. Um, you can you can do all sorts of things, but it's basically a package where you can start adding an additional uh, additional sensor to it, and then basically make it measure stuff. And it's it's really really cool. Um, so I think that's one of my favorite projects. Nice. <laughs> all right. Before we, uh, I think we have a, a few more minutes before we can open up for uh, for also a few questions. So you can start thinking about questions you have to the panelists. Uh, one more thing I'd like to uh, get the discussion sort of focused on is now that we're we're in an age where we're connecting everything and everything sort of becomes an interface and has uh, collects data. One of the big questions is always raised is uh, security and privacy. Um, so uh, how do you think like? Is it, is it a big problem right now that there's no, is there any standard? Is it like, what are the, what are the biggest uh, problems around the, the threat of security when everything is sort of an open connection into a network that's maybe then your shower is connected with your health app and whatever, you know, where, what can we do to basically safeguard against that? Actually, uh, it's a very serious problem, right? And, mm -hmm. and uh, we do not see I mean, we believe it doesn't exist because we didn't hear anything big about it, right? Like, for example, during last weekend uh, about the Ramsur. But the case is that it's, it's a huge problem. And uh, taking examples from my own uh, garden, I would say that for the telecoms, you know, the security and the privacy is at the, the, on, the, on the highest top, right? Uh, you know, from one side, telecoms are strictly regulated and they are, they are huge fines for violating those regulations. So. We are really committed to keep the security and keep the privacy. Uh, so, you know, you need to provide the security on different levels, on, on the application level, on the, uh, on the connectivity level, but also on the data center level and the way you process the data. So it's a huge problem, or no, huge challenge. We need to be aware of it. And ju it's just a matter of the time when we hear about the huge leakage of, I don't know, of, uh, Nest sensors or whatever, right? But we need to treat it very seriously. So no solution yet, but a big open yeah, opportunity I, for startups. No, <laughs> I would say that mm, there are solutions, but the case is that right now we didn't notice any serious damage with this. And when it comes, then we'll be able to say if this, what we are doing, is right or not, right? Okay. And how we need to improve. Yeah. At this stage, I would say that, yes, we are safe. But as the guys from the security are saying, there are no safe uh, um, systems, right? They are not compromised yet. Okay. One, one thing uh, I'd like to add is actually security is a never ending problem. Let's say, you know, it's always better, it's always better, and it will always be better. We are going to work more, etc. So, you know, it's important to see that security will always be an issue anyway. And so you have to take care into account when you build your own service or device, etc. One thing we always, I guess, forget to mention is that security, you know, can also be by design. You know, you don't have to build, you know, you don't have to add firewalls, etc., to everything. If you actually take care into account security when you design your object and in the needs of your your, 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 your service, sorry. And, and an example I'd really like to take is, you know, for, um, for example, for connected lock, you really need to open your lock from your office or whatsoever. All the service you need is just to know that your lock is open or closed because it's very, very different. Do you really need to connect all these things and to be talking to them? Or do you just need information from them? It's very important to understand that it's very, very different. And uh, at Sigfox, we, uh, you know, it's actually it's very interesting because when there is this big, big IoT problem with security cameras, IoT is a problem. And at Sigfox, we felt really weird because you know, our objects, 95% of them, they just talk. You don't, they, they, they don't listen. You can't really access them. So, so you can't hack them. This active yeah, exactly. So right. it just, it, it's not connected. They are just talking to the, to the network. And you can't talk to them. So they are completely you know, deaf. And so this is really, really funny. Because when you take security into your design and you think about it as beginning, you actually remove a lot of these issues. But if you build a gadget, and in the end you say, oh, crap, I, I build a Bluetooth locker. And I'm going to have a big, big issue with it then you have a big problem because your product is done and you can't do anything about it. Like, I think they, they did a security issue, um, trials on 12 Bluetooth locks. You can actually, they could open 10 or 11 to, on 12 of them. It's a big, big, I don't want people to come in my home just with a phone <laughs> and with BLE. I mean, yeah. it's quite incredible. So again, I mean, right. if you think about security by design and say, okay, I don't want to, my things to be accessible. I just want them to talk on the network. Then it's something a bit better. Yeah. Point to add, and then we'll take some questions after that. <laughs> 
Yeah, and not much to add to that, actually. <laughs> um, I would like to add that I think building it into design is one of the reasons why you see a lot of IoT platforms coming out of Germany, because Germany has some of the highest data security standards in the world right now. And so if they can meet German compliance, then they are pretty much one of the most secure platforms in the world, or so we like to think, being based in Berlin. Um, <laughs> but it's our personal opinion. Um, and I personally am really interested to see what types of blockchain solutions come out for security, because as blockchain grows and IoT grows, they will be intertwined, so that a lot of this is measured within that system. And so we have distributed ledgers, making sure that every point of access is recorded and um, and ensured that it's from the right point of contact, so okay. no one can hack those systems. All right. Thanks. Uh, let's take a few minutes for questions from the audience. Who wants to start? I'm sure some people with you have a question. Always, so somebody needs to be the icebreaker. <laughs> Does any of you, who, who here has his own startup? Who here is interested in starting a startup? Nobody. Come on, guys. Are you still sleeping? <laughs> Who here is part of a big company that uh, owns big machines? Also nobody. All right. A few people. All right. Um, are your machines already connected in some way? You don't know? Okay. <laughs> All right. Anybody can't come up with a question? There is one. There we go. See? It always works. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is there any part of our life uh, that Internet of Things shouldn't have access to? That's a good question. So anything where we shouldn't connect? Simple answer, no. Right. Uh, and the cases, just let me finish. Actually, you know, the, the, the cases that uh, no matter if you want or not, someone will either way will do this and, and, and will sneak in uh, sooner or later, actually, right? Uh, the question is to be aware of it and to be conscious the way you use it and actually find uh, something that can improve and work for you. For example, you know, always uh, we are talking about the e-health, that people, they don't want to share their health information. But actually, if they are doing the right way, uh, if they are shared for, for, uh, as a predictive maintenance, Come on, this is, this is only doing for good, right? You're not going to have a cancer because it's much better to discover the cancer or find a cancer earlier than cure the cancer. So I would say this is a matter of the wise usage and allowing this in a control way and being conscious and aware. Yeah. And security, uh, I suppose, above the all. One thing to add is actually it all depends on you. We have completely different you know, set of mind regarding privacy, regarding security, data, etc. I mean, most of us are ready to give, to give out privacy in these emails just to get a good search engine to get in the email. So when you go to Gmail, you know Google is going to read all of them. Uh, but you have a good search engine and you're ready to keep privacy out just to get a good search engine. So if it really depends on your how, view on privacy and what we, you know, machines can't access or not. I mentioned locks, for example. I hate you know, that somebody could actually open my door from abroad. So I would never put in my whole life a connected lock. It's completely impossible. I don't want anybody to access at my home. So I would say it really depends on you. If you're ready to give out privacy or whatsoever for a few you know, top-notch feature, then it's descending on you. Uh, it, and, and that's, I'll say, that be it. Yeah, it's your choice, uh, I would say. So. And it should be your choice, and it, but it should be made aware, to be honest. So it's basically what data is collected. I think that's the most important part. It should be um, public, and it should also be, I think, public how this is used. Because then you can make an, a real decision. So let's hope the, the NSA listened to that sentence. Yeah. <laughs> All right, anybody have, uh, I think we have time for one more question. Somebody want to ask the panelists one final question? All right. Then. Thank you very much uh, for joining the panel. I think it was an interesting discussion. I think you're all sticking around for a bit. So if anybody wants to ask a question in private, I'm sure uh, you'll be available. Uh, but for now, yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for participating. Thank you. Thank you.